let's paint. So today I'm going to do a very simple landscape to show how to paint foliage, greenery, all the stuff. You know, do I have to paint every leaf on the tree? Uh, do I have to paint every blade of grass? <clears throat> <laughs> Get him, Maria. Oh my goodness. So, I'm going to show a couple of different ways to do that. And see if we can't make something pretty. So, I'm going to start off with a one inch chipped brush. And we're just going to lay in a sky for our background. Andy Sheen. Hello, Andy. Welcome. Says, I always like you until this, and I loved you. <laughs> <laughs> Very kind of you. All right, here we go. Now, what I've got is a little bit of phthalo blue, a tiny touch of, uh, what kind of red is this? Red ochre, <laughs> and a lot of titanium white. If I copy this link and send it to it. You can do that. And don't worry about, as you're painting, don't worry about brush strokes or putting in clouds. The sky in this painting is just a placeholder of color <coughs> living back here in the back. When I'm out painting live somewhere, this is how I will do a sky to get it done very, very quickly because everything changes fast when you're painting outdoors or on plein air, as we say. So just get the color up there. I'm going to throw in a little bit of this raw white into that wet mixture that's already there <clears throat> to lighten it in the center. We're going to bring this down to about the one third mark using that ratio of thirds, the rule of thirds. Pardon me? Yes. yes. Yeah. She might need to go again, but she's been. All right. Get the more white right in the center. Maybe some more up here. Just let it be what it wants to be. Don't stress over it. All right. That's all the sky we're doing. That's quite a big departure from my big extravagant clouds I've been doing, but that's a very simple sky. I hear you, Maria. All right. The scene is... She can see you. Okay. She can't hear you very well. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, I will speak as loudly as I can without being <laughs> distorted. So what we're going to do is shoot in kind of a lawn in the mid-ground. Before that I'm using sap green, cad yellow, and a little bit of white. You can lighten it or darken it to your taste. I'm going to lighten this a little bit and a little bit more yellow. really want kind of that sunshine feel going on. And just as with the sky, not really overly concerned with your brushwork. <clears throat> just getting it down there. All right, good enough. Now, I think I'm going to put in. No, not. Yeah. yeah. The foliage will carry on down here, but I'm just going to put in some uh, 
some of my darkest dark, which is always raw umber and phthalo blue. Just to have a dark color down here. And that's all we're doing. All right. Back here on the horizon, I'm going to dip straight into my sap green and that blue-white mixture that I already had for the sky. Andy says, I used to do my house in my mom's paintings. A fire ended that. Will you let me do creeps? Will I let will I what? Sure, I mean, yes, absolutely. If you want to paint along, yes. All right, what I'm going to do is uh, just with that kind of washed out green, blue, white mixture, just on the grass line back here, I'm going to just shoot in using the side of the brush, just some loose indication of maybe a little more green and a little more yellow in that. Of the uh, foliage back here in the distance. And I'm not worried too much about the sides because we're going to cover those. This is kind of you're peeking through the trees at a clearing. So just using nice loose brushwork. And then underneath. that that we just did. We're just going to put a shadow. There we go. Glass is sliding off my face. And then right back in with some of that light. part is kind of sculpting. We're going to go into that darkest dark, but now I've added some sap green to it. So if you're painting along, that's phthalo blue, raw umber, and sap green. And we're going to just make a mess. This is not, I'm not painting from a photograph, this is just something from my own memory. Letting some of the sky show through. And then let it come all the way to the top. It's very wet. So we can work with it for quite a little bit. Come on down here. So see already we're getting that that pop of light through there. I think I'm going to accent that. I'm going to grab a number four Phillips. Excuse me. And just some of that bright, bright green. Now I'm pushing the paint that's underneath and is darker so it will dry quicker because it's still too wet to lay that on right now. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go with this dark. And just get that dark shadow peeking underneath. Still very wet. Alright, so instead of fighting it, we will just, and because like, don't fight your paint, just move right on to what you were already doing. So, same thing we did over here, we're going to do it over here. Just with that darkest dark, we're going to shoot in a shape 
of the trees that we're peeking through to view this little field here. idea is that we're going to create a contrast between these darks on this side and across the top and bottom and the light that's in the background and midground. So if we do it right, we'll get an eye topping composition. I'm going to mix a little uh, red ochre in with this. Red is an advancing color, so it will make your shadows glow. So down here closest to us, just putting in a little bit of that red and it will very quietly make that pop. Also it's the complementary color of green so it'll help that green pop a little more also. All right, This is an easy way to do foliage and I'll probably come back and do some more with it. But let me show you a couple of other ways that it's done. Um, depending on what style you use. Let's get a small round. So just a small round brush. I'm going directly into my green, my sap green, and I'm going to pick a spot and you would just dab in very quickly the shapes that you want. Let the brush empty itself as you work. You can alternate by putting in some of the lighter green. <coughs> and that's the dabbing. You can also do the little uh, back and forth strokes that make the little curls. And as you get enough of them down, it creates its own visual texture that suggests to our mind's eye leaves. Do a little bit more here to show you how that works. Let's make a light spot. back into our dark. I'm going to add some red into this one. And notice it's not going to turn the painting red. It's just going to make the green pop. Alright, before I move on and decide if I'm going to do the whole thing in that style, i show you a different technique using the same brush or load up green and just lay it sideways and just shoot in as quickly as you want to or as quickly as you can and you don't have to go all the same direction you're just laying in texture shapes variety go over here and get some of the light green maybe we'll just Put some of that in, doing the same thing. Into the red. Don't want to cover up all the blue. So that's another way. I'll do a little bit more for you. This is another good way if you're painting live somewhere quickly getting your foliage or your green stuff constructed because you may go back to the studio and work on the painting after you're done with the outside construction but you got to have enough of your construction done your composition to work with when you get inside so let me see which way I want to go with this I'll do a little bit more over here you can also do a combination of all of these techniques. Oh, let me show you the third one before I get married to either of those.
third one is go right back to your big brush, your one inch chisel brush, and you can just dab. This, is, this was made famous by Bill Alexander and Bob Ross. And a lot of people like this. It's easy to do. It, it, admittedly, it's a little cheesy to do things this way. But it is whatever you like. When you're doing a painting, it's your world. Paint it any way you want to. I'll do a little bit more with this technique. And you can see it covers ground very quickly. But I think I'm going to do a combination of all of the above. So I'm going to get my little round back, which one is this for size? Try to be helpful. My brushes are really caked from years of use. <laughs> it is a Come on. That one little piece of paint is going to come off. It is a number four round. Yay! <laughs> Figured it out. So just, and, and I'm letting the paint be thick and textured. This is indeed the way the original Impressionists did it. Monet, Pissarro in particular. Renoir had a much softer touch and would blend a bit more, but Monet, Pissarro, Sicily, some of those guys, they would just lay it on heavy because they were after a quick, immediate effect. They didn't have time, particularly with oil, to just wait around for it to dry. Right, I need some more sap green. <coughs> Pardon me. Not you, not you. You couldn't. I have only got a sap green. It's the color I use most. I love blue with sap green. And I think to make it go further, I'm going to add in some blue and some brown. And we'll just let our brush wander around the canvas. We'll run over these spots here where I use the dabbing technique. I want this a little darker here. here on the other side because it's already looking pretty good. Chuck wants to know if you have a particular brand of acrylic company. Um, I prefer Liquitex, Jeanette, um, but I'll use anything I can. <laughs> Whatever I can get my hands on. Liquitex is a good quality paint. It's made in America and kind of want to support American jobs. So... Whenever possible, that's what I use. And welcome, Jeanette. It's good to have you here. Just being loose, playing around with the structure. There's so many ways to do this, and we're not... This can be as simple or as complicated as you choose to make it. I'm going to put some of the limbs in, and I'm going to try to accent some of the light back there. Just got to let this get dry. In fact, I'm going to help it along by wiping some off. There we go. Because I really want that to pop down there. All right. 
get a little sip of the coffee. Coffee is required to make quality art. Everybody knows this. <laughs> Filbert. And again, the set green, yellow, and white to make just almost a retina burning green. There we go. Okay, and don't worry if you're running over there because you can put it right back. When you're the painter, you are the designer of your world. It can be anything you want it to be. You kind of like that effect. There we go. Just let it be loose. Well, let's see. I want to do a little more blue on those trees in the background. Blue is a receding color as red is an advancing color, which means the tint in the paint will do the work for you of creating atmospheric perspective. So we just let it do what it already wants to do. Just kind of Keep it random, keep it loose. There we go. Just trees or shrubs or whatever they are, they're off in the distance, minding their own business on the other side of this clearing. this same number four round back into the green and just put in your scribbles when we look with the human eye at a scene like this in nature you can see the individual leaves if you look for them but if you were standing here and you were looking back here you don't see these leaves your brain fills in the blanks of just a texture back there telling you that they are leaves. Did you see a question? I did not. She says, is this being done with acrylic or oil, wet or wet? I see white out the far area that you now want with the yellow. It is acrylic wet on wet, um, Jeanette. This is a technique. I try to do it this way so oil painters can do the same painting as a paint along with me because it is wet on wet and by the way wet on wet is also the way that I work when I am outdoors of course when you are outdoors your acrylic is going to dry super fast so just scribbling in down here And I think that's looking pretty good. I like that. Well, I want some blue. I want some blue right here. Don't be afraid to put everything in your palette into the scene. It will work. Because all those good, what makes green? Blue and yellow. So if I put blue into green, I'm just making a different shade of green optically, not chemically. Yeah, I like that. That's kind of cooling it off a little bit. Not everywhere. You don't want it to be uniform. Just loose, free, fun. 
you're not having fun doing it, don't do it. I mean, seriously, life is filled with enough got to's and enough misery. If painting makes you miserable, either change your approach to it or do something else. <laughs> but don't let it make you miserable. It says, what red and blue are you using? The red is red ochre. The blue is thalo blue. Let's see if now we can get a little bit of shadow back here under the tree line. as yes we can. There we go. Now a little bit later on I'll come back in here and I will lighten this even more. But what I want to do now is we're just going to randomly, I'm not trying by any stretch to be photorealistic. But we're going to go in here with some white into our darkest dark mixture. And we're just going to shoot in something that might be a tree. Maybe it has a friend. Maybe there's a limb going that way. Just the lightest possible touch. coming up and we'll do this too. I'm going to bring this one up through there. I will tone it and shape it as it dries. This is a what I call something for later. It's a note to myself to come back and play around in that area. I'm going to thicken the tree on this side. Move that out of the way. I just threw a brush into the floor. I'm sorry, Mr. Brush. Mm -hmm. I did not mean to do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab my sable rigger or rigging brush, which is the smallest brush I own. And I'm going to, with my mist bottle, I'm gonna make a very inky, uh, dark color. And just play with this. Let it go from thick to thin. There we go. And then into the white, also keeping it inky. I should say not into the white, adding white to that same color. I'm just going to put in the indication of limbs living back in here. Just loose and easy. Come across the bottom and smear them out. Or don't. You can let them come on down and have their origin somewhere else further down. But this is loose. I'm painting from my shoulder, not my fingertips. Big mistake I see a lot of painters making early on is they try to choke down and get real tight with everything. There's a time for that, but it's not with everything that you do. Just let your shoulder do the movement. There we go. Maybe there's some living down here. <coughs> I 
<coughs> Excuse me. Got choked on thin air. <laughs> Just some up here at the top. It's a very random and just natural thing. Down here it's chopped off. So we're going to add a little bit of our foliage. Just as simple as that. Oh, Griffin says hi. Thank him, my darling. Good to have you here. I'm going to put some of the blue. This red is drying a little too uniform for me, so I'm going to put some of the blue in. And again, just loose. Almost, you could almost blindfold yourself and do this part. I think control freaks become uh, photorealism painters and impression or and uh, ADD folks become impressionists. That's got to be it. <laughs> I'm gonna put some going in front of the tree trunk here. We'll carry that across this one as well. There we go. I'm going to use a bigger filbert. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of that pop in here. How are we doing on time, honey? 6.43. Looking good. This is almost finished. A little touch of green. There we go. There, and you want that kind of contrast to make this composition work. There we go. Back into my darkest dark. Jeanette wants to know, do you sign your paintings on the front and the back? Just the front. Unless it's like this, or if I do one that's uh, part of the uh, vital element is the silhouette, I will not sign on the front. I will flip it over and sign it on the back. <clears throat> because if I were to mix up a light color and go into the uh, dark part, I would be taking away from the visual impact of the painting. Just varying this up a little bit back here. Oh, yes, Kim, Kim said, hey, I said, hey. I don't guess she heard you. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, baby girl, and I'm glad to have you here. I hope all is well in your world. This is the persnickety part where you can just play around to get things the way you want them. Because I brought this brightness down here, I'm going to put in a little bit of it breaking through. James Bomer says good evening. Hey Bomer, good to see you my friend. I hope life is treating you well. I saw that monster fish you caught, oh my god. Yeah, I'm liking that. Let's let's have this uh, this little lawn break into the trees here a little. Just a little bit. Letting all those wet colors just work together. And then you come in and you reshape it <coughs> with your round. Come back in and break it up. I'm just breaking up the edges. Because the gardener has been on vacation, he is not clipping these shrubs. So we're just going to keep it loose. Loosey goosey. There we 
けど Just for the sake of difference, I'm going to put in some lighter colors up here, some lighter green. This is just, <clears throat> excuse me, cad yellow and sap green. I add a little white to it. Just putting in some hints of light breaking through. otherwise known as just variety for variety's sake. <clears throat> Creating interest and depth in your work. We don't want to be one dimensional. We don't want to be a one trick pony. Yeah, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. I'm going to grab some of my red ochre. Just darken up over here a little bit. Just went, well, I shouldn't say darken. I'm going to put some vibrance into this green on that side. And I don't want to come straight across and do the same thing here, but I will move it up here and kind of do the same thing. This adds visual balance to your work. That's a little too forward. I'm going to put some green right over the top of it. Break it down some. Just a little bit. And this is absolutely pure impressionism. <coughs> Excuse me. A little more of my light color. Just play with these trunks a little bit. On a strong element down here. There we go. I'll do the same thing over here. I decided I didn't want this broken up like I did it. So we're just going to restate. And that is the word. We're going to restate this tree trunk. The strong vertical elements add balance to your composition and they keep the viewer looking you know the whole idea particularly if you hang in a gallery somewhere where there are other works you want the viewers eye to stay on your art longer than the other guys so give them something give them some eye candy give them something to look at Alright, with that, we are just about done. Now, I can let this get bone dry and come in and put some layers in, and I will, um, just to create some texture in the grass. But for the most part, this one is done. Don't overwork it. Know when to stop. Always remember to step away from your work and give it a look. Yep, and I think that looks pretty good. Hello, Joe Bailey. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you. Bummer, were you on the golf when you caught that fish? Because it was huge. Oh, I got a, something up there I don't like. I just, and that's why you step away. <clears throat> Where that trunk was is just this weird patch of white hanging out by itself. So we're going to just break that up. Make it go away in its place. I'll put some of the lighter texture in there. Well, it sure does, as always. <laughs> Guys, I love you. I appreciate you hanging out with us. I will be back next Saturday, good Lord willing, with another live paint.
If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, in the description below you'll find the link to my website where you can see all of my available works. Well, I've got to update it. I've got some more I've got to add. I want to remind everyone that right now I'm running a sale on my website. All my works are between 40 and 70% off. COVID lockdown has about killed my business. And so I have a backlog of paints. Paintings, not paints. I got to get rid of some of them. Got to make room for new work. Put a little bit of... I can't stop, y'all. It's so fun. I'm going to put a little bit of, of heavy leaf texture down here. Jeanette wants to know, is that a wrapped canvas or a panel that needs framing? It is. Uh, it's not gallery wrapped. It's a stretched canvas, so it will need a frame. <clears throat> but for storage purposes, you can just hang it, hang it on the stretcher bar. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's do a little bit down here. Just some interesting texture. There's just something going on down here. Don't define it. Just let it be what it is. All right, guys. With that, we're going to call this one done. Love you. God bless. We will see you next Saturday, 6 o'clock. Please come and hang out with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Bye.